So recently I've seen this art challenge floating around in the art community called the Old Art Style Challenge. This challenge is basically where you draw in your old art style and make a complete piece with it. As I said in another video some time ago, I do yearly art summaries and I'm always on a nostalgia grind. I like digging up old art like they're these like cool fossils. So I thought it would be a fun idea to use all that old art I've stored in a vault and draw in that style again. It seemed like a pretty easy challenge, but maybe I'll struggle with it because I like keeping my style consistent. I have old art that stretches as far back as 2019, so I have a massive catalog to go through. Like what style do I pick? Which one is my favorite? Which one do I hate the most? It's time to find that out today. So let's draw with me. This is going to be pretty hard to pick because I equally hate all of my old art styles. That's a half joke because I still feel a sense of nostalgia when it comes to my old art. Even though most of it used a horrible amount of line tool and circle tool, I was one of those artists in that era. The one who over relies on circle tool, especially for the heads. I'm sure we've all had that era in our lives as artists, especially in the beginning when we were starting out. My art style has always been at least somewhat consistent over the years, actually. I can still recognize my old art as me who made it because I never did massive art style overhauls. The biggest overhaul in my art style was likely in April 2023, when I started adding more details like making my faces longer and more human instead of using circle tool to no end. We also have to pick an art style that isn't too old, but also not too recent. I'm thinking of getting art between late 2020, 2021, and early 2022, because that's the middle stage of my art where I started to seriously improve. I will likely choose 2021 because it's like the most middle stage you can get, I suppose. I also found most of my old art that is set in 2021 in specific, so it makes my life a lot easier on me. I think I mentioned this in another video, but I said that my art was the best it's ever been in 2021. I said that I'll never say that again because my art always improves, so there's a good reason to pick 2021. If I think my art was the best at the time, then let's draw that way. Because this video is supposed to be like 10 minutes or something, and I've seen it mostly on TikTok or YouTube shorts as short form content. I found it randomly on my feed as a YouTube short, which is weird because I thought it would be in the short section of YouTube, but it's whatever. I got inspiration to do this video from it, so that's alright, I suppose. I'll try to find the link to the video. I think the video is pretty recent in my YouTube history. If I do, and I probably will, I'll link it in the description. What I'll do is pretty simple, really. I'm going to make two drawings for this video in the same canvas. One style, likely on the left, will have the old style, and on the other side, there will be my new and current art style. The art will be the same, just in different styles, so it's easier to reflect and compare my art and what it would've looked like if I drew at the time. I probably need to take some notes on my old art style and show off some speed paints so I can get a much better grasp on it. I will also take notes on my current art style and put them into a t-shirt for comparison's sake as well. So after a while, I finally found a piece of art that reflects my 2021 style and works well with what I want to create for this challenge. Drum roll, please. This lovely piece of not that bad garbage. I made this July 30th, 2021, so around the middle to near to the end of the year. This was of an OC I made during Christmas 2020 named Gizm. I used to really love drawing them and it was a blast just having this emotionally unstable nugget. She was from an animation meme that I made which I may or may not show on screen right now. She was a very simple character in all honesty. She basically had horrible anxiety and would glitch near technology, specifically TVs. I was going to make a webcomic called Escapism which was about her backstory and escaping a lab to find escapism. I think I still have my sketchbook with all the beta chapters and pages that I doodled. I never got to make a single page and actually finish it. Maybe one day I'll draw it and complete a chapter for a video. I took some notes on how I drew which was pretty easy because I have her Ibis Paint X file in my phone because I've had it for like three years now. I quickly realized that my old style had some issues especially the rampant use of circle and line tools, which was not my best idea in the world. I did this at the time because I drew on a phone and my thumb wasn't the best at drawing straight lines and circles. Yes, I could have made more detailed faces with jaws, but by the time I started doing that, I had already skipped over to my iPad with an Apple Pencil, so I didn't need to use the circle tool anymore because I was actually working with a stylus that felt much more natural than using my thumb on a tiny ass phone screen. Now that this boring stuff is out of the way, we can draw with me. But wait, I have a sponsor for this video, and that sponsor is me! I do commissions now and only through Cash App. 
So if you want to commission me, just DM me on my socials or email me at realdoodles at gmail.com. So if you want to support me and my art, you should definitely commission me sometime. Obviously, you don't have to. Your support and comments, views, and likes and whatever is the best way you can support me. Anyways, self-promo over. Oh god, this is a long section. Now for the challenge itself. What an interesting experience it was. I was expecting this challenge to take a longer amount of time because I drew two characters in different styles which will take more effort or so I thought. Working in my old style was one of the most relaxing experiences I've ever had even if I had to put some thought into making it accurate. It was much more simple and required less effort than my current. This speed paint in the background is obviously sped up but the actual art took me two and a half hours, no I'm not joking. My usual art only takes me a few hours like maybe four or five. So it was a breath of fresh air to be working on something so simple and easy to draw. Since Gizm is such a simple character without a full head of hair, I did much less shading than I would. Obviously I did shade it, but it took me less time and I did not expect that. Most of my shading effort is put into the hair and obviously she doesn't have much. Later in the speed paint, you'll see me struggling with how to give her hair in my current style. I wasn't sure whether or not I gave her a full set of hair or have that hair tough thing she has on her head. It kind of reminds me of fur, but I'm not going to call Gizm a furry. When I first started drawing, I quickly realized how odd it was to draw in a style I haven't drawn in nearly three years. I am so used to drawing in my usual style, so of course, sometimes I wanted to go back to my normal drawing mode and polish everything in the old style. It was also an odd feeling to draw on my cool tablet with my cool stylus and cool computer instead of my little phone on a free art program where I had to watch ads every time I closed out the file. While yes, it was relaxing and a very quick experience, it was also kind of nightmarish because I felt like I was 11 again, sitting on my phone on my bed in the middle of the night when we still had to wear masks everywhere and it's kind of freaky because I'm turning 15 this year. While working on the facial features of my older style, it was also weird because while I still draw big eyes, it's easier for me nowadays because I still have room on the face for details like adding a mouth and nose, which is something I didn't do back in the day when using my phone. It was also kind of annoying trying to figure out how to edit my brush and make it have no pen pressure just like my old art, which admittedly was an easy fix and once I figured that out, I was kind of embarrassed because I've used this art program for a year now. Oh yeah, quick note while I'm recording, I could have just used a marker brush or something like that in Clip Studio Paint. That was pretty stupid. When I drew the pupils of the eye, I did some hatching, kind of, to show that there was going to be color there. I never did that for my old art, so I had to remove it. That was a very clear example of me not being used to drawing in this style because it's been so long. I originally tried copying the art I was referencing off of because it made sense to me, but that wouldn't really make any sense and just would make the video a half remaking old art video. To be fair, it kinda is, but also isn't. So I simply just shifted over the sleeve from being massive on one hand to being pretty normal and not massive. I don't know how to describe it. Doing line art also kind of pissed me off because I had to purposely add no line weight and make my lines messier and have no use of stabilization. I never used the stabilizer in Ibis Paint X because it wasn't really good or I just couldn't tell the difference. I didn't mention that the stabilizer felt weird and I couldn't tell the difference. It has been like that since 2018. I really hope they fix it and add way more options for it. The speed in which I was drawing in my old style was crazy. It only was finished in like 45 minutes and my current style, that took me two hours because I take so much more time sketching and lining my work. The liner is the most important part, so making the sketch clear and nice makes it so much easier for me to do my line art because I put a lot of effort into it. I almost always add line weight on my art nowadays and when I do forget and realize when the piece is finished, it is very noticeable. The effect is kind of subtle, but it makes you realize how how important line weight is, even if it is subtle. I also do this effect where I duplicate my line art layer and add a blur to it. It just works and you need to try it out at least once when creating line art. My biggest piece of advice for artists is to experiment and try something new when you do art and get bored of it. Subtle effects and finishing touches are what they are, the cherry on top when creating art. If you don't do final touches then your piece may feel incomplete, at least to me. Sometimes when I make my art more interesting I just add sparkles. I just didn't do that for this one because I didn't feel like it. I I really like making my art bright and colorful and this piece is the opposite. When I was younger, I was kind of scared of making my art really bright and whatnot. Nowadays, I make it colorful because it's fun. So working on this darker toned, basically monochromatic piece of art was really weird for my eyes. Especially because I thought it was on the grayscale layer mode instead of the color mode. 
and it disorientated me because I'm usually so surrounded in color when making art. I really wanted to give Gizm lots of color and cool shiny hair and detailed shading, but her character design was kinda hard for me to work with because again, I like shading hair and putting lots of effort into it. So only having that one piece of tuft of hair was not easy to work with, and I had to cope with it. Despite my style still being cartoony, working with such a character like Gizm, with no nose or ears and just a little tuft of hair, is so weird. I probably could have done much more with her shading and probably could have cheated more to make her more colorful, but it's whatever. I did like how the art looked in the end and it was an interesting challenge to face. One of the issues I had was just with the head shape because, again, bald character, kinda. What made it even harder was a lack of ears so I couldn't really draw that part of the head that people don't often see. Adapting the ponytail was also another part of it. I wasn't sure how to add it, but I gave up and just assumed that the ponytail was on the back of her head. When I was looking at my older art, it looked like the ponytail was like on her cheek and not on the back of her head like it's supposed to. It becomes a lot more clear if you draw her from a side view. The biggest pain in the ass was also just working with the thick lines and having no pen pressure as I mentioned earlier. My line art tends to look maybe a little thinner because I don't use heavy pressure in my lines. That's probably because I'm afraid of breaking my pen or cracking my tablet screen because I put too much pressure onto it. That's a pretty stupid fear. But this challenge was easier than I expected, but I also knew drawing in my old style would not take as long as my current because it's simpler, faster, and quicker to draw. There are a lot less details to worry about in my old style than there is in my newer one. And it was just a very relaxing experience overall. I wasn't worrying about making every little detail right and making sure everything had to work together to create a beautiful and lovely art piece. But now it's time to see the complete and finished piece of art. Would I recommend this challenge to other artists out there? That is a big yes for reasons, I guess. This challenge gives you a much easier perspective on how you created your old artwork and what went into it. How did you sketch bodies and poses? Maybe you do line art and coloring differently back then and trying it gives you a more in-depth study of it. I like how I used to do multiple layers for sketches, but I don't do that nowadays because it makes me feel more restricted. I like having more freeform sketches that, you know, still look nice. It also gives you a better view of your workflow and the differences between how it used to be and what they are now. And despite you being able to notice your flaws in your old art, this challenge is making those flaws much clearer for you and gives you a much better study of what you did wrong. This challenge has given me a boost of confidence for my current artwork. I have been feeling good about it, but this helps me keep track of my progress in a creative way that I haven't seen around the art community. If you do this challenge and do it like how I did, you should add me on social media because I'd love to see what your old art and new art look like in a cool format. You should avoid taking this too seriously and use this challenge as more of a relaxing thing. Maybe it's just me and feeling really calm when I was creating the art, but when I tackled this challenge, I felt much more in the flow and didn't try to make the old art style as accurate as possible down to the pixel. It was really nice to sit around at my desk for two hours, mostly uninterrupted and drawing on my tablet with some art videos in the background. I probably would have done better at this challenge if I just actually studied and took more notes and actually like drew some like little examples Samples, but it's fine. I didn't feel the need to do it because the old art was much less detailed so I could sketch it, line it, and color it in about 45 minutes, which was the genuine length of the drawing according to the recording on my computer when I play back and review the speed paint when I write the script. Thank you so much for watching this video to the very end and being interested in this fun little challenge that I decided to dip my toes into. You should subscribe because I create much more art content like this and you will likely enjoy watching that too. Hope you find this video interesting enough to support my future content and it would mean a lot for you to subscribe. And if you do, thank you. I have other social media that I'm active on such as Instagram, Twitter, and a lovely little Discord server you can join. Anyways, I'm Rio Doodles. It's been nice to talk to you. I'll see you next time. Bye!